Hi, this is Alex Deployer, and I've just finished this week's summary of the double in a day trades. And let's have a look at the summary in this video. There are some very important points that are going to come out of this analysis. Now, you get to the weekly summaries by clicking on the double in a day trades option on the menu. You then go down to weekly double in a day trades, and there are there's the list of all the weekly summaries, including this week's summary. Also on this menu, you will see settings used for double in a day weekly trades. Very important page that a lot of traders don't look at, but these are the settings that are used consistently for these double in a day trades. We'll have a look at them at a later stage. So let's go to today's summary. Right, so firstly, we're going to have a look at the 12-week summary of the double in a day trades, showing the six currencies that we're trading plus the four strategies that we are trading. So if we have a closer look at this summary, we'll see that there were 562 trades over a 12-week period. So there were about 46 trades a week. That's quite a lot. A lot of opportunity to trade double in a day trades. We'll also see that the pound yen has been the most successful currency by far, with the pound being second and the, the euro yen being third. We, we can also see here that the 60 pip strategy is seen to be the, the most successful strategy. It's got the most winners in that particular strategy. And that's what I want to talk about today, because a lot of emails that we get are talking about people using this particular strategy and designing double and day strategies around that. They then say the 60 pip strategy has been the most successful producing the most winners and the pound yen is the most successful currency and they immediately start trading the pound yen because of this information. And in today's video I want to point out that this is most probably the worst decision trading decision that you can make. You need to understand the information underlying this summary. So let's move on to last week's summary. Last week there were 48 successful double in a day trades. A lot fewer than the previous week but uh, above average for the total of the 12 week period. Again, the same statistics come out. The pound yen is the most successful trading currency, and the 60 pip study has produced the most winners. This week, we have also looked at the break even trades and the losing trades, which would give you a lot more information. So let's have a look at the break even trades. Remember, we had 48 successful winning trades. So during this week, we had 134 break-even trades. Those are trades where the first top-up gets activated and possibly the second or third top-up, but the price comes back and hits the break-even stop. So that's why they are regarded as break-even trades. At this stage, we haven't assumed that the stop is being moved to a break-even position for the initial trade, which we'll cover a little bit later. Now, as you can see here, there are a lot more break-even trades than there are winning trades. And that's normal for the double-in-a-day system. There's normally about four or five times more break-even trades than winning trades. So just bear that in mind. You need a lot of patience to trade the double-in-a-day system because it has a lot of break-even trades and as we'll see later on it also has a lot of losing trades. Right so let's have a look at the losing trades and as you can see the number has grown tremendously. It is now 725 losing trades. There were I think 138 break-even trades and there were uh, 40 Eight, I think winning trades. So you can see the number of losing trades is a very high number. Now let's just look at this in a little bit more detail. Let's see, let's have a look at the stop target ratio. 
Now, this ratio refers to the initial trade's stop compared not to its target, but compared to the first top-up level. In other words, we don't want the trade to go to its target in terms of this evaluation. We want it to just get to the first top-up level because when it reaches the first top-up level, it is risk-free. In terms of the 60 pip strategy, you have a 12 pip stop and you have a 21 pip target to reach your first top-up. The 85 pip strategy has got a 14 pip stop and a 30 pip target to reach the first top-up. 110 pip strategy has a 17 pip stop and a 34 pip target to reach the first top up. And the 130 pip strategy has a 20 pip stop and 86 pip target to reach its first. So the stop target ratio affects your success rate. If you've got a small stop and you're going for a huge target, your success rate will be smaller. Then, if you have a reasonable size stop and you have a reasonable size target. So for this exercise, we are assuming very pessimistic success rates. We're assuming 23% success rate for the 60 pip, pip target, a 25% success rate for the 85 pip target, a 28% success rate for the 110 pip target, and a 31% success rate for the 130 pip target. Now based on those success on that success rate we can then calculate the number of losing trades and that is what how this table has been set up. It has specifically been set up on a calculated basis and not an actual basis because we want to present a pessimistic view of the results. The success rate is also based on the use of the envelope slash RSI system which has a very high success rate. The results here have been watered down tremendously. If you can remember in a recent video we had a look at the pound yen and we had a look at the successes of the pound yen but we also looked at the potential failures when using the envelope RSI system and we concluded that 20 failures during that period would be very pessimistic. Now this calculated amount here comes to 26, so I think we're in the right ballpark. So what does all this mean? What we then have to do is we have to add up our gains and then subtract our losses to see how each strategy has done and each currency has done. So the next table that we look at will do exactly that. Right, so here's the table taking the results of all trades into account. So we're taking the winning trades, the break-even trades, and the losing trades. And essentially, it's very easy. You just multiply the winning trades. For instance, in the 60 pip strategy, you would multiply the winning trades by 50%, and you would multiply the losing trades by 5%. The amount risked in all four of the strategies is 5% of your account. So that becomes quite easy because you just multiply the losers by 5%. And when we come to these strategies, you multiply the winners by 100%. So this, that calculation was made. And as you can see, there are a lot of losers, losing strategies in this table, which actually represents the accounts that we are trading on a live situation. So there's a lot of confirmation in these calculated figures. But the most important thing that I need to show you is the 60 pip strategy and the pound yen. It is in fact the worst producing currency. And the reason for that is that the pound yen has a reasonably big spread. It's, it's about four, five, sometimes six. And if you're trading with a 12 pip stop, there's virtually no margin of error. You, you'll get stopped out a lot of times and that's what actually happens with that particular strategy you can't trade it with such tight stops so as you can see people that have chosen the pound yen on a 60 pip strategy have actually made the worst choice of all the currencies and strategies available now the best choice in fact from these calculations of, of course is the pound yen on a hundred 
10 pip strategy or on a 130 pip strategy. And why is that? That's because the stops are slightly bigger, the targets are in relation slightly smaller, and that gives the pound yen a better chance of success. Remember, to avoid a loser, you just need to get the price to the first top up level. And that's how we measure success rate for your initial trade. Now, another thing about the this table also shows that the yen crosses are the most profitable. So before we go, I will just want to show you the strategies that we are using to trade these accounts. Right, to find the strategies, you just go to the double in a day trades. You go to your weekly double in a day trades. The first item there is settings used, and we'll click on that. Here we mentioned the currency is traded. And here are the settings for each strategy. So the 130 pip strategy has the following settings. The 105 pip strategy has the following settings. And so on. The, the 85 pip strategy, those settings. And the 60 pip strategy, those settings. You'll see there is a slight variation on the top up levels uh, for the longer current for the longer strategies we do have more top up levels than for the shorter currencies. Also shown in these strategy is the initial stop and you can see how small the initial stop is for the 60 pip strategy compared to compared to the 130 pip strategy where you have a nice larger stop which also increases your success level tremendously. So please study this table very carefully when deciding which strategy to use and which currency to use. Always use what you feel most comfortable with. For me, Alex Deploy, cheerio.